The other thing that I get asked a lot in my videos is about the loom that I'm using. I thought I'd give you a quick loom tour, kind of show you what it is that my loom does, how it's laid out, and what I would do differently if I were to build it myself. I do have kind of rough drawings and I'm going to try to scan this, maybe clean up the drawing a little bit, and post it in my blog so you have a detailed description of what the loom is and how it's laid out. Full disclosure, I did take a little bit of woodworking when I was in middle school, um, but I, I haven't done a whole lot, so I am not a proficient woodworker. I didn't make this myself, nor did I buy it commercially. I bought it from somebody at an event, and it was more than 20 years ago. Let me point out a few things on the loom that I like. First of all, this thing is made out of solid oak. It It's a little bit heavy, yes, but um, you don't want to use any lighter um, softwoods because you might risk some bending or twisting under all the tension. Um, so I would use a hardwood. Oak is pretty cheap and uh, easy to come by. The dimensions for the base piece and the upright pieces are all one and a half by two and a half inches, and that's the finished dimensions. All of the dowels are one inch, again, finished dimension, and I believe... I don't think these are oak. I think these might be maple. Uh, I'm not absolutely certain. Again, I'm not a woodworker, but um, they do look more like my cupboards downstairs, not my floors. The base here is a scrap piece of wood. I ended up putting that there myself because before that was there, the loom was, was very teetery. Um, as you work it, it would, it would rock back and forth. It drove me absolutely crazy. So I just took a piece of scrap wood that was in the wood pile and I ran it through the table saw a couple of times so that it would fit this piece of wood. I love it now. This tension rod is threaded. Um, it works just by, you know, simply twisting one end over the other. The, um, the dowel does not rest in a slot there, just the metal piece goes through. Retention. So the two pieces dowel are just pinching this piece of wood. The full length of this base piece is 29 inches and the dowels are, I mean you could pretty much place them wherever you want as long as as you thread it the threads don't interfere with each other. Um, the couple of things that I would change would be to leave a bigger space between the dowels. If you look at these back dowels there's almost three fingers worth of space between each one. That makes threading this really easy in the back. Here, it's not even two fingers width space, and I crack my knuckles on these all the time. It, it makes it very difficult. Same with this one, this pair in the front. Again, very close together, makes it difficult to thread. This rod doesn't have any yarns on it at the moment. This one does. As you weave, the, the whole warp gets shorter because the threads go from being straight, like here, to being wavy and everything shrinks up and it shrinks about 25%. So after a time, this tension rod, it's nearly there. It'll be all the way to the front. So I slip the threads off of this peg and move it to this back peg, which allows me to move this tension peg back and allows me to weave a little bit longer. Eventually I still run out of space and I end up having to slip this back one off and put it up here, which is not ideal, but I, I kind of mess around with how the thing is warped just to finish up that last yard. So another thing that I would change is I would probably make this slot longer, at least an inch longer on this side and maybe another half inch longer on this side. And in fact, probably make this whole base a little bit longer here so that you can space out these two dowels a little bit more. And then these three dowels would be spaced out a little bit more. Now the reason why they have the spacing close here is because if you use this as an ankle loom, this is your heddle rod, and you'll have string heddles holding half your threads. So half the threads will be pulled down here, and the, the threads will go from this peg straight back to this back peg. And so you don't want to interfere with this peg. However, if you're only using it for tablet weaving, that's not an issue, and you can space them out a little bit more. The one other thing about these pegs that I need to point out oops, is that 
they are all the way through the wood and they've been split and wedged. Um, that's been absolutely essential. Not only having hardwood pegs, but having them split so that they don't move at all. Um, I did have to glue this one back into place. This one spins a little bit, but it hasn't been a problem. And I think this one I re-glued as well. But otherwise, it's held up solidly for more than 25 years. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to last quite a lot longer. The only other thing that we did replace was the threading on the tension peg wore out, and we had to replace that. These uprights are not straight up and down. This is about a 75 degree angle here and 75 degree angle in the back here. This is jointed back here. And that, of course, gives it that structural stability for when it's under tension so it doesn't flop over on itself. So this particular loom, the finished length on it is about three and three quarters yards. Um, the warp length, when you first warp it up, is about five yards. So if you want to make one for yourself, that is how it would be done. If you're looking for plans for other looms, you probably will find some that have the, uh, the paddle uh, tensioning system in the back. And while that's fine for, for short weaves, it doesn't work well for really long pieces. I also find that the tensioning system with the slide tension is much more secure. So I think that's about all I can tell you about this particular loom. It's a really solid tool and I love it. If you want to build one yourself, I hope that you find this particular video useful.